highly secretive, powerful ambush predators that glide through murky water. Conservation of these species requires a lot. Bone-jarring headbutts, terrifying close calls, crushing tail wax, cuts, bruises, and broken bones. All for the sake of crocodile conservation. This is nature's way. The art of crocodile hunting is known to many Americans because of Animal Planet star Steve Irwin. His passion and unique love for animals has created a long-lasting impression on many individuals. I have done extensive research on Steve Irwin the crocodile hunter and the legacy he left. Today I will inform you of the four things that resolve around Steve and his life as a crocodile hunter. Firstly, who Steve Irwin is. Secondly, the history of crocodile hunting. Third, how to catch a live one. And lastly, Steve's death and legacy. According to the Australia Zoo Wildlife Warriors, Steve Irwin was born in Essendon, Victoria on February 22, 1962. He grew up loving all kinds of wildlife, but especially reptiles. His dad was his hero and he taught him a lot of what he knew about the world. Steve caught his first venomous snake at the age of six and was known for being tardy to school for rescuing lizards off the side of the road. As he grew older, Steve lived in many remote areas throughout Queensland, saving problem crocodiles before poachers got to them first. He worked with his little dog, Suey, and developed crocodile capture and management techniques that are now utilized with crocodilians around the world. Eventually, his credibility grew, and later, Steve took over the Family Wild Animal Park and renamed it the Australia Zoo. Then his rise to fame really happened. On April 5, 1997, the new show, The Crocodile Hunter, first appeared on Animal Planet. The Crocodile Hunter is a wildlife documentary television series that was hosted by Steve and his wife, Terry. According to researcher Rich Powell, the show became a popular franchise due to Irwin's unconventional approach to wildlife. The series aired 55 episodes during five seasons from 1997 until 2004. Steve's exuberant presenting style, broad Australian accent, constant wearing of khakis and catch bays, crikey, became recognizable worldwide. Bindi was born in, on 1998, his daughter, and Robert, his son, was born in 2003. Now that we know a little bit about who Steve Irwin is, let's take a quick look at the history of crocodile hunting. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, European settlers in the north killed crocs, but no systematic hunting occurred. Hunting was opportunistic and individual crocodiles were killed by locals fearful for their safety. According to researcher Claire Brennan, a range of different types of crocodile hunting developed during the 1940s, 1950s, and 1960s in Queensland. Commercial hunters killed crocodiles and retrieved their skins, which were sold to dealers, in Cairns. The profitability of crocodile hunting, as well as its adventurous aspects, led to a steep decline in crocodile numbers across northern Australia by 1960. Journalist Bob Mason writes, around 1945, just after the war, crocodile hunting went into overdrive until 1971 when it was thought that the population of crocs had hit a low of around 3,000. Crocodiles became an endangered species and hunting was banned and has been since then. Now that you've heard about the, croc the history of crocodile hunting, I will now inform you of the techniques used to catch a crocodile. Steve Irwin first looks for belly slides, which are found near the water on the muddy banks. He ensures that surveying the banks of the waterways for slides, claw marks, and imprints will determine the whereabouts and habits of large crocodiles. Another technique that Steve uses is known as the top jaw rope. According to Steve's episodes on Animal Planet, first he wedges a stick in the croc's mouth in order to get the string through to the other side. Then he ties it around the top jaw multiple times, securing it um, so he can maneuver the croc. After the top jaw rope is successfully on, the next thing to do is restrain the croc. The simplest way is to jump on it and hold it down. The amount of people power required is proportional to the size, aggressiveness, fitness, and stamina of each croc. If you don't or can't control the croc's head, you will be maimed or killed, according to Steve. Once the croc has been jumped and successfully pinned down, no one gets off. 
a gap will turn into a weakness, and then the whole down team could be in danger. If you give a croc an inch, it will rapidly turn it into a mile. Now that you know how Steve catches crocs, I will begin to touch on his unfortunate death and the legacy he left. According to reporter Joel Landau from New York Daily News on September 4, 2006, while Steve was scuba diving and getting footage of stingrays for his daughter Bindi's TV show, an eight-foot stingray attacked him, stinging him in the heart multiple times. His team tried to save him, but by the time the medics came, it was too late. On September 20th, a public memorial service was held in the Australia Zoo's 5,500-seat Crocosseum. This service was broadcast live throughout the world, and it is estimated to have been seen by over 300 million viewers worldwide. Steve's wife, Terry, along with Bindi and Robert, her children, were devastated to hear the news. After Steve died, many were heartbroken. People all over were obliged to continue to spread his message of conservation and protection for animals. While Steve is no longer here, his loving and genuine spirit still impacts people today. As one message on a tribute to Steve reads, always a hero, always in our heart, never to be forgotten. According to the International Crocodile Rescue, National Steve Irwin Day is November 15th every year to honor Steve's life and great achievements. In conclusion, I have shared a few things about who Steve Irwin is and what he shared with the world. I have pointed out these four things that reflect Steve's life as a crocodile hunter. Firstly, who Steve is, the history of crocodile hunting, how to catch a live one, and Steve's death and legacy. Next time you see a croc, Remember Steve-O and crikey, don't muck with it. Thank you.